Okay, so now that we've got our tile map uh, maze kind of set up here, what we're going to do is switch over to our game scene.sks file, and in this uh, initial block of code that runs, let's write for node in self dot children. So this is going to iterate through all the children in the scene, but right now we only have one of them anyway, which is our tile map. And we're going to write an if statement here that says if node is sk tile map node. There we go. So if you find one of those guys, then what we're going to do is write if, don't need to do the parentheses, if let the map, and we're going to make sure that our new variable is going to be an sk tile map node equals node as sk tile map node. Then in that case, we're just going to pass that um, node, which we've confirmed now is an sk tile map node, into this function. So that's going to be set up scene with map. And if you're wondering why we couldn't just, you know, I don't know, cut straight to this, well, we're basically just making sure that, you know, the node that we're looking at is an SK tile map, but this also lets us have more than one on there. Uh, I don't think it's really necessary to include more than one. Uh, you know, if we want to make a bigger maze, we could easily just go back over here to our scene and change the map size from, you know, more than 24 columns and more than 24 rows. Uh, but in theory, you know, it's, it's possible to uh, include more in there. All right. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, essentially the available space, right? So the negative space in our tile map. Uh, the U space is where we've painted our tiles and our array of available spots, great name, right? Uh, is going to be an array of CG points, right? So a CG point is a point in space that's got an X and a Y location, and we're going to store all of the, basically the spots like this one right here, uh, we're going to store there the X and Y location of them, which is going to be the center point of them, into that array. So at the end of this, you know, we should have, if there's 24 times 24, basically multiply those two together. Looks like we probably got about half of those uh, that are unused. So that's how many objects would be in our array. And our character is just going to move from point to point. And uh, don't worry, they're not going to uh, not going to jump around uh, leapfrog style. It's, it's going to be smooth. And uh, all right, let's write this function so we stop hearing this complaint about it not existing. Okay, all right, so we are passing into this the map, right? So within this function, when uh, we refer to map, it's going to be whichever one we are currently passed into there. And at this point, we should stop seeing this uh, argument passed the call that, you know, there it goes, went away on its own. And all right, so we're going to say, uh, let's. Uh, you know what? I don't think I need that first line of code. <laughs> um, uh, what the heck? I'll go ahead and do it anyway, just so I don't have to. <laughs> Here. Now. Let tile map equals map. Yep, it's pointless. I know. <laughs> but I don't feel like rewriting this code right now. Uh, all right, so uh, tile map dot tile size. Okay, so this is a property of uh, tile maps. Is uh, We can figure out the tile size. And what we're going to do here is figure out what half the width equals. So we're going to say uh, let half width CG float, uh, this is a, a number type, is going to equal our tile map dot number of columns. Okay. And then that's going to be divided by 2.0. Feels like there should be another parentheses in here, but there's not. Uh, and then tile size dot width. Okay, so you know what? Let's just go ahead and print out what half the width is. Just so we see it. See that it's working. Okay, um, it's 384, right? Um, I guess that uh, probably makes sense. Could we figure it out by just uh, clicking over here and looking at it? Eh, I think we probably could. Or if we did a little calculation on 32 times 24. Yep, that equals 768. 
Now, we don't want to hard code in numbers like that, though, because then we'd always be kind of locked into using that same size. Um, all right, so we've got uh, we've got the half the width in there. Let's go ahead and just paste in what uh, half the height is or half height is. And we're going to end up using uh, those numbers in just a little bit. All right, so we're going to say uh, for call in, so that's column, in uh, zero dot dot. So we're going to iterate through, and don't put a space right here because it's not going to like that. Uh, tile map dot number of columns. Okay, got that. Uh, and then we're going to do a very similar uh, statement right here, or another similar uh, for loop down here. So it's for row in zero dot dot. Again, tile map dot number of rows. Boom. All right. So this is going to iterate through every one of our columns, right? So like that. Uh, and then also when it's doing that, it's going to go through the uh, the rows in there. So for a row in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, which will, of course, end up uh, basically iterating through every one of our um, spots on the grid. Now, within here, we're going to say if let, and this is kind of an odd case. Um, so let's just say if let some tile, right, is going to equal tile map dot tile definition at column okay call row so really that is what gets us to that particular tile uh, so we're gonna say if let some tile equals uh, tile dot map dot uh, definition so really this should be like some tile definition or def right um, let's get this out of the way close off that if statement basically a tile exists here, right? Or I should say a painted tile exists here. Uh, do we want to do anything with that? Actually, we don't, <laughs> oddly enough. Uh, so what I'm going to do is um, take out that variable. Otherwise, we will hear this constant complaint, like one of these things, about us not using it. All right. Uh, so you can you can run lines of code like this um, and just kind of use this as a way of checking to see if something exists there or not. And we're mostly using the or not. Um, so let's write in here uh, a painted tile does not exist here. So our character could move to it. Okay. So then. We're gonna to want to keep writing down there, and you know what? Uh, there might be a better way to write this. Who knows? But at least this gives you guys the option to, if you did want to do something here, you could. So maybe you'd want to have an array of tiles that are at that spot. And if you haven't figured this out already, no, we're not putting any sort of physics bodies or anything like this on these tiles. That's how I ended up uh, doing my original maze game a long time ago. That. Um, I think was programmed in Swift one, and it um, it worked fine. It uh, but I think this is a lot cooler. Uh, okay, so now what we're gonna do is figure out the uh, the x location of that. So it's a uh, tile size dot uh, width minus. Uh, here's where our half width comes in. Plus, this is some crazy math right here, isn't it? You know, I kind of reworked this off of some older code I had. Uh, and I wonder if uh, wonder if this could maybe uh, be simplified in some way. <laughs> Who knows? But that's not how I operate. If uh, if I've got some code working, <laughs> I'm just most likely going to use it. Uh, all right, so there we go. Tile size dot height. And now, if you wanted, what you could do is you could write a, a print statement in here that says no tile at. Let's use exclamation. I mean caps for that just to emphasize that it's uh, how serious we are about this. Okay, so no tile at, and then we could um, put in the variables inside of here. So when you're using variables inside of a print statement like this, you do that backslash and then the whatever parentheses. Uh, so if you want to just see what gets printed out here, um, hopefully you should see something. Otherwise, it's a really bad sign, but uh, yep, there we go. So let's uh, move this over this way. No tile at, and, and obviously we're getting, there's, this makes sense, right? We're seeing all the 240s together, and then, you know, those placements over there. Uh, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say let new point. 
cg point. Remember, this is just an x and y location. So this will be cg point, and it gets set up like this. Yeah, it looks a little redundant, doesn't it? Y colon y, but you know, a lot of times. I mean, you know, in other cases, it would look something like this. But we just happen to be using x and y for our variable names as well. Okay, so uh, now <clears throat> this took me a little bit of figuring out as to what was going on wrong. We actually want to convert this uh, point to our scene's uh, kind of main coordinate space. Uh, right now it exists within the tile map. So what we want to do is just write new point converted. Again, this will be a CG point equals self dot convert. And then we just write in here, new point, new, not a new pint, although I am drinking a pint right now, from, uh, and then colon, our tile map. So this is the node that we are basically <coughs> converting the space from. Now it is possible that, um, you know, uh, you could set this up in such a way that, you know, and to do this, you'd probably have to put this at uh, something like right down here, at zero, zero, or I don't know. It's... But it is possible that your uh, coordinate, sp coordinate space for the scene and within the tile map itself could match up. But again, you know, we want flexibility here. I want you to be able to push this thing out anywhere you want, throw it anywhere in the scene, and uh, everything be a okay. So again, it's just kind of converting, oops, uh, these spots uh, to our main scene space, where again we are uh, going to append them or add them to our array of available spots and uh, that is now going to be append and we're just going to write here new uh, point converted okay cool uh, so now uh, it, you've got your array together and uh, that is where you get to uh, move around uh, with your character but we don't have a character right uh, so we're going to need to add that in the next lesson